when you when you change positions of switches and check gauges in a cockpit you do it with what's called a flow in this airplane the flow starts at the overhead panel you go along these switches and if you you recognize which switch it is and you know whether or not it should be on or off in the before started right now we put the gyro switches on we have the battery switch on we have the bus bar here on the generators we don't need right now the starter and ignition we don't need we verify our voltage and amps then we come back down and we start over here verify the suction gauge all the instruments here in their positions are in the proper position we can turn the attitude indicators on here we go across in the condenser panel verify that all the lights are working there here's our fuel gauge and pressure and quantity we can verify at this point in our checklist for the fuel selectors in the manual position the autopilot or the aux fuel pump is in the off position our ELT backup is of course just in standby and arm we don't need to do anything with our uh, flux detector for the gyro at this point in time we continue down and we verify our bleeds and air conditioning is off our pressurization and ram dump is in we verify the positions of our th throttle quadrant now the flaps are up Cut off on the conditional lever, the propellers in back to full, the throttles at idle, the backup throttle is in manual, the trim wheels are the same. We verify our fuel on board, our position of our landing gear indicator and all of its lights, and then all of our lights over here and switches over here control the uh, icing and de icing and pitot heat and stuff. So we, we do what's called a flow around the cockpit. Now when we're getting ready to start, we go back to the same flow and we position switches in the right position. So we will put the generator to main, we will put the ignition switch to auto, and we'd be prepared for the starter motor. We come back down here, verify across, we will put the fuel selector in the auto position. We will look down here at the fuel selector switch and we will push the button to make sure that the switch changes position when we push the shift button up here. We come over and we turn the off boost pump to, to, to um, auto or to on for the engine start and then we come back down and verify our bleeds are off so at this point in time we would actually start the engine we're not going to do it today because of the outside people around the outside of the airplane but we would in, engage the starter and bring the condition lever up and, and start the engine so everything's done with the flow in the in most airplanes it starts in the top and it goes from left to right and it just goes around and the pilot gets to know where he knows where every switch is supposed to be now let's go back and talk a little bit more detailed about the, the, the gauges in this airplane. This is the airspeed indicator. A lot of airspeed indicators have different uh, arcs. This one, the arc is, uh, starts down at the, at the bottom here and uh, works its way back up. We rotate the airplane about 85 knots over here on the left and uh, we climb out at about 160 knots indicated. The next is this is the attitude indicator. It's this is electronically driven, and you. Uh, oh, I, the attitude indicator electronically driven. This is our first altimeter, primary altimeter. The altimeter is um, used for our reduced vertical separation minimums. It's an expensive altimeter. Believe it or not, that altimeter is about forty thousand dollars. There's a second one of those altimeters down here for the co-pilot. Those are needed to be able to fly in the high altitudes with the airliners where sophisticated instrumentation is needed so that uh, everyone knows where you are. The uh, HSI, the horizontal situation indicator, is basically takes the depictions off the radios and sends it over to, to it so that you actually know where you're navigating to and from. This is a standby instrument right here uh, in case your primaries go out as you can use it to, to back up. And then there's another uh, bearing distance heading indicator down here that has two more heading informations off of your different navigation radius. And there's a clock to the left that has multi functions to it. Your vertical speed is the speed at which you climb climbing out the airplane. And then here's your stack of engine instruments. Your torque is your primary air engine, in, or engine instrument in a, T, in a turboprop airplane. And then there's your prop RPM. Normally, you run this airplane at 2,000 RPM, and you never have to change that. Here's your internal temperature of the engine, telling you if it's getting too hot or not. 
Next is your NG. That's the di that's the speed that the core of the engine is going at, not the prop. And then your engine oil pressure and temperature, and then your fuel trend monitor. It tells you monthly the functions about use of the fuel and how much you have left and how far it's going to get you. Your uh, and that's your panel here. It tells you all the different systems on the airplane. There's backups. The reason there's two tests on it, there's actually two sources of power for it. So that if something goes wrong electronically, you have a backup to, to tell you if something's wrong in the airplane. This big multifunction display here has about a dozen things that you can show on it. Right now you can actually see us sitting on the ramp here in Vero Beach at that hangar. The next link is the Garmin 530. It's a very common air in, uh, radio today that a lot of people use. It's a very sophisticated radio. We have a second Garmin 530 here. We have a third COM as a backup. We have a transponder here, which is what's called Mode S, which is good for the, the new um, uh, ADSB. ADSB requirements. And here's a standby attitude or standby transponder, a Mode C transponder. The Copilot instruments, airspeed, gyro, altimeter, a second RVSM altimeter, it's his HSI and vertical speed. This whole panel here is pressurization panel. Right there is a rate of changes of the cabin, bleed air switch, uh, high and low settings, air conditioning, high and low settings. There's a fellow that crashed on a TBM about four or five months ago. It's believed at this point in time that he reached down probably to turn off his air conditioning switch and he turned off his bleed and didn't realize it and that's why he depressurized the airplane. This is a gauge that has three needles in it telling you the rate of change, the current altitude of the airplane, and uh, what the pressure differential is across the fuselage, and there's temperature controls, and then there's a ram air dump. So here's your primary fuel panel, quantity, pressure, and settings, and the fuel selector is in the, the throttle quadrant area, and your pressurization. Those are standards in all airplanes, and then a lot of the Airplanes at different years have different avionics in them, depending on how the pilots set that up for that particular airplane. Your throttle quadrant here has your flap selector gauge there. There's your condition lever, cut off, idle, low and high. In this engine, you only start in low and then you immediately go to high. You don't really do anything in low other than start. There's your propeller control at full lever forward. It's 2,000 RPM. If you had to feather it, you just pull it back, slide it over here, and that would feather the propeller. And then you have to go past that little detent. And the condition lever is another detent, but it, it goes up and over, whereas the prop is sideways and over to help keep you, make sure that you identify which one you're on. Here's your throttle, which is just all or nothing. You pull it up and pull back in the reverse, but you don't ever want to do that when the engine is not running. You can actually damage the mechanics of it. This is a manual override for the throttle. If you lost the bleed system that controls the engine and throttle, you can actually pull this lever up and move it forward, and you can actually run the engine with that little lever. Aileron trim here is a, right here. Your um, mechanical elevator trim. Your rudder trim is on the yoke. And of course, you have your pickle, pickle trim here where you can move the, uh, the trim electronically, electrically. These are just little pads in here to keep bumping your knees into the corners. I have wide knees and it makes them more comfortable. The rudders down below are pretty standard. Rudder brakes. Circuit breaker panels over to the left. Some auxiliary circuit breakers up here. And uh, again the overhead panel has uh, landing lights, gyro controls, main power sources, and engine control. And then here's your Oxygen on, oxygen on for the rear, and your oxygen uh, gauge telling you how much oxygen is on board. And your mask back here for your sweep on oxygen system.